I ain't doing nothing to I talk to a lawyer. You got your camera on? I ain't doing nothing to I talk to a lawyer. Vodka in his seat, like right here in a pouch in his seat. Vodka was found. I'm not gonna call her and you I'm going lie. to call you know a tow truck. You don't even want to be on wearing that bed. Did you you a liar. Me? You say you smell Did marijuana. You, you a liar. Are you listening? And I'm gonna prove that. I'm gonna tow your and vehicle. And they're gonna fire you. Okay. They're gonna fire you because okay. you a liar. I'm gonna call. Bye. Let's get you. Bye, bye, bye. All right, we're gonna get you to jail, okay? Bye. All right. So the empty bottle. That was evidence of DUI at this point, correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. But the contents would really be the evidence of the DUI? Could be, correct. Mm -hmm. But you dumped it out? Correct. Despite it being evidence? Correct. Police officers are entrusted with the critical duty of upholding the law, gathering evidence, and presenting the unvarnished truth about each case. But what happens when a rookie officer betrays this trust? choosing instead to both destroy evidence and plant evidence to ensure her narrative holds up. This breach of integrity not only undermines public confidence, but also corrupts the very foundation of justice. This scenario isn't just a breach of protocol. It's a betrayal of the fundamental principles that law enforcement is built upon, raising questions about accountability and the lengths to which some might go to secure a conviction. Welcome to Audit Oblivion. On May 7, 2023, Officer Kirsten Oliver of Tallahassee Police Department initiated a traffic stop that would soon become the focal point of a highly controversial case. Calvin Riley Sr., a well-known local barber, was pulled over for allegedly driving at high speed without headlights. According to Officer Oliver, Riley exhibited signs of intoxication. His speech was slurred and his eyes were glazed. What began as a routine DUI stop swiftly escalated into a sinister series of events. Hello, sir. I'm Officer Oliver with Tallahassee Police Department. Do you have your driver's license, registration, insurance? Yes, sir. So you don't have any headlights on, and you're going really fast down Monroe Street. Headlight? My, mm -hmm. my headlights automatically on when I'm driving. They're not on right now. Are you sure about that? Yes, sir. Okay. No problem. Because... Where are you coming from? I'm coming from West Bar Street, one of them is my brother. Okay. My name is Kevin Riley Senior. Okay. Do you have a driver's license? Yes, I do. Okay, can but you I get can, that for me? I can't find it right now. Where's your wallet at? Um I don't really carry a wallet. You don't carry a wallet at all? Where do you carry your money at? Um, bank. A bank? Okay. How do you pay for things? On your phone? Okay, I got you. Um, no problem. I'll write down your information. You said Calvin Riley? I can take that. Perfect. Senior? Yes. What's your date of birth, sir? Okay. Okay. Um, so I'll just want to go ahead and show you. So right now you just have your parking lights on. So if you switch them to, that's your auto. Now they're on. Okay. Sit tight for me, okay? Thank you. Give me one second. Hey, when you're done with your stuff, can you have a reminder, please? 
Officer Oliver asks Officer Margaret Muth for backup once she concludes her current traffic stop. Both officers were engaged in a separate stop when Riley's white Mercedes sped past them without headlights. Officer Oliver decided to pursue Riley's vehicle. This decision set in motion a series of events that would soon raise serious questions about the integrity of the stop and the actions taken by the officers involved. Officer Oliver questioned Riley about his wallet. She would later state that it is unusual for someone not to have their wallet, and it was likely due to the fact that Mr. Riley knew that his license was suspended. So, I feel like I'm getting some indications, but I'm not 100% sure. I can't really smell anything right now. Do you think you can just talk to him? He's like looking everywhere for his like ID, and he's like looking up here and pulling out papers and like looking around and everything. He says he doesn't carry a wallet. I said, how do you have money? He goes, the bank. And I said, okay, well, he's just not making a lot of sense. Yeah. He didn't have lights on. He's flying down Monroe Street. And when I went to pull him over, he like started to get over and then came back over and then like is kind of like hovering and then stopped. Okay. So if you'll just see yeah, if you I'll can see anything. So he's got suspended. It's Calvin Riley. Also yeah. So I'm going to ask him that's why he doesn't have a driver's license, because he knows it's suspended. Yeah. So. That could also be why he's um, When you go up there, can you ask him if he still lives on? Yeah, I'll do that. Thanks. And just let me know over the radio. Hi there. I'm Officer Um, I'm not the officer who stopped you. The officer that stopped you wants to know if you still live over off the Boulevard Street. Uh, Is the family house? Okay, so do you still live there? Okay, but that's where you like lay your head to sleep at night. Okay, where are you coming from tonight? Um, the north side. The north side? Where were you at? Pockets. Pockets? Did you have anything to drink while you were at Pockets? Couple of years. Okay. Um, I got you. I got you. Um, just hang tight in the car for me. The other officer's gonna be back with you in just a minute, okay? Officer Oliver asks Muth to contact Riley under the pretext of verifying his address to see whether he is showing signs of impairment. Mr. Riley confirms that he has had a couple of beers, but when Officer Muth goes back to relay the information to Officer Oliver, she states that she could smell marijuana. Yeah, he said he's coming from Pockets and he had beers at Pockets. Oh, he didn't tell me that? I asked him that because he originally said the north side and I said we're out on the north side and he said Pockets. So you told like, me he's coming from Brevard Street. Um, holy crap, this is um, so he did say he had beers or pockets? Yeah. Do you get any other indications? I mean, his the speech is a slur. And yeah. He's, he's got the watery bloodshot eyes, and I do have odor. Do you want me to do signal or investigation? Can I watch you? Yeah. Okay. I, mean, I promise the next one I'll do. <laughs> That's it. And he's got a suspended deal on you guys. Okay. Well, we still have to find him. There's another way to go. What's he going to go Calvin. Okay. <clears throat> hey, Calvin. Really quick, can you do me a favor and just shut off your car and set the keys on the dash for me? Thank you, sir. 
Um, so I want to go more into the beers that you said you had. Yeah. Would you be willing to do some voluntary field sobriety exercises? Not really. No. I had two beers, and that's what it is. Okay. Here, go ahead and step out of the vehicle for us. Just go ahead and face the corner of the car for us. Your license is suspended, so we're going to... Okay, no problem. Oh, so can I call somebody to come pick the car? Yeah, we'll get to that. Just give me a second, okay? You knew your license was suspended? No, I didn't. That's why you didn't have your ID on you. Oh, oh. First of all, my ideas are my dog, so I'm work and they will find in my life. There you go. Alrighty. Mr. Riley, we're going to walk back to my car, okay? Okay. It's okay. Just don't reach in your pockets for me. Okay, I'm not. Well, I'm what are you trying to do? I'm not trying to do nothing. I'm going to ask you a simple question. What's up? Yeah, we'll get it. I'm to Yes. Get my phone and call somebody right now. Yep, and One just detain. a second we can. Yes. yes so come back to my car for me. I understand what you're asking me, but I'm asking you a simple question. And I said, here, Calvin, yes, your phone we is here. We're going to get your phone. We're going to get you back to the car, though, okay? Oh, no. See that phone right now? Yep. Yes, we're going to get it. Can you get it right now? No. Why are you standing right here? No. Okay, I will grab it once we get you to the car, okay? Come on, Calvin. We're going to walk over here. Okay. Thank you, sir. It is important to mention now that Oliver places Riley in handcuffs and walks him over to her patrol car. Later, she will ask to transfer Riley to Officer Muth's patrol car in an attempt to avoid accountability. This change made it possible for Muth, not Oliver, to be responsible for writing the arrest report. It also allowed Oliver to avoid signing the report because if she had, she'd be signing a document she knew to be false. Let's keep watching. No, no, let, me, let me tell you something, man. Let me tell you something. I don't know. You, you heard what she just said. She smelled my wrong, right? Yeah. I don't even so okay. what? But well, you come with that. That's a little block. Okay. And don't, just you, right here. Do you have a medical marijuana card? No, I don't have smoke you, nothing. Have you recently smoked pen? I don't smoke nothing. Okay. So, you trying that bullshit? And that's my money right there okay. for my job. I got you. So, let me okay, tell you something. You see my back of my shirt? What that show? I show you I'm a barber. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? So what you're saying is you smell okay. marijuana. You're alive. So I'm, I'm gonna show you something. Or, you That's cool. All right, go ahead and sit down in my car for me, okay? You got me a little glass in my mouth. I got it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you smell marijuana. Yeah, go ahead and sit down. Officer Oliver, go ahead and sit down for me. Kelvin, sit down for us. I will. So you say you smell marijuana. Sit down, please. Is that the reason you stopped me? Or you stopped me because my, my me. life is out? Yes, sir, okay. and you're speeding. But you, no, I was speeding. Yes. I got a track mm -hmm. on my seat. Okay. And you smell marijuana. Just watch your foot, okay? Wow, he reads about alcohol. Yeah. Um. <laughs> is there enough, like, before that? Yeah. Once Riley is in the back of Officer Oliver's patrol car, Oliver asks what can be done about his refusal to participate in the voluntary field sobriety test. Oliver then puts on latex gloves and heads over to Riley's vehicle to conduct a search. There's nothing that we can do for the signal one portion of it because he refused. If he refuses exercises now, I can ask him if he wants to do a breakfast. We'll go through this first and then...
I don't know. It smells very strong. This is cologne right here, though. It's like sprayed it like right before. It's got like a gold chain and a big bag. We're in a thing. What is this? A ring. Nothing in there. Smell this. Sure it smells like alcohol. Yep. I think we're good on this signal. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> Just based off my training and experience. A hair clip under here. <laughs> cool. Hey, there's vodka in his seat, like right here in a pouch in his seat. Vodka was found in this pouch in his seat. If you wanted to finish searching, I'll go talk to him about the Signal 1 stuff. Yeah. The separation enables Oliver to manipulate the situation to ensure an arrest. Muth continues to question Riley, now focusing on the subject of marijuana. Muth later testified that she and Oliver formulated a plan. Ask Riley to submit to a voluntary field sobriety test, and if he refused, they would exercise their discretion to arrest him for a first-time offense of driving with a suspended license. Hey, really quick, I want to ask you more questions about your drinking, okay? Oliver's body-worn camera captures the sound of her breaking the seal on a liquor bottle and pouring out the liquid beside Riley's Mercedes. After emptying it, Oliver tosses the bottle onto the floorboard of the passenger side of Riley's vehicle. against you in a court of law, you have the right to talk to the lawyer and have them present with you while you're being questioned. No, if we you talk about we talk about marijuana and so smoking. I want to ask you questions about the alcohol. Life. Ain't nobody no alcohol. You say you stopped me for my life was off. Then she said she stopped me for smelling marijuana. That's two different stories. So alcohol is beside the point. The point is I told you I had two bills and she over here saying one thing about she smelled marijuana. How can you smell marijuana? You both blocks away from me, and then you say you stopped me from my lights was out. Okay, cool. No problem. We'll deal with this later. Whatever. Can I speak, Calvin? You can say what you want. Okay. I said what I said. If it is what it is. If you cannot afford to hire a lawyer, hey, man. Be appointed hey, 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 hey. Say what you want. You can decide at any time to exercise these rights to not answer Say any questions or make any statements. Say what you want. Do you understand you each want. of these rights as I have explained them Say to you? Say what you want. I asked you to get my phone so I can make a phone call to my people. Let them know what's going on. You say you'll get my phone. We have your phone. No. I said, ask you, can you get my phone so I can call them? And okay. you said you would. So I'm okay. sitting here. Okay. And she said she smelled marijuana. You said you stopped me because my life was off. That's two I, different stories. So you, it's all good. I told you it's I all was good. not the officer. It's all here. good, man. Just get my phone so okay. I can call my people so they'll know they come and get okay, me. So we're, we're and we'll go from there and you made a bad deal. That's how I go. And you say you smell marijuana. Hey. You're a silly person. Hey, Calvin. You're a silly person because I don't even smoke. I don't even smoke. 
you are still a person. You you use that same technological that they use in the old days. You don't smell no marijuana on me. You a liar. Hey Calvin. You ain't smell no marijuana. You a liar. Calvin. You a liar. You don't even be on police off because you're a liar. Because we're not you acknowledging that for an excuse. That... You use that for an excuse to do what you want to do. The search. You ain't search shit because you know what? I ain't get. You ain't got nothing. Hey, Cause I don't smoke. Calvin. We I don't do no drugs. Calvin. You a liar. Calvin. You say you smell marijuana. Why you record that? Under Florida Statute 316.1932, law enforcement officers have the authority to request a breathalyzer test if there is probable cause to believe that a driver is under the influence of alcohol. Riley's admission to drinking two bottles of beer provided the officers with the necessary probable cause to request a breathalyzer test to determine his blood alcohol content. I'm now requesting you that said, you submit to a lawful test of your yeah. breath for the purpose of determining an well, alcohol content. Will you take no, the no, test? No, no, you're going from one to two to three. Will you I take ain't the doing test? nothing. I ain't doing nothing this to I speak for, to a lawyer. I ain't viewer. doing okay. nothing to I talk to a lawyer. If you refuse the test, I ain't I doing nothing to I talk to I a lawyer. To I ain't doing nothing to I talk to a lawyer. I ain't doing nothing to I talk to a lawyer. You got your camera on. I ain't doing nothing to I talk to a lawyer. Don't touch me. Stay you in are sorry to me. Okay, I'm in the car. I'm in the car. You got me cuffed. I'm sitting in the seat. I'm in the car. That's right. Close the door. Okay. Uh, give me my phone so I call my lady. Hey, if you refuse give to me take my the test, phone. I have a request to have you give me for driving privileges. Give me my phone so I call my people. Or 18 months of your driving privileges have been previously phone. suspended. Give me my phone. Or if you have been previously fined under statute 327.3525. Give me my phone, phone. Give give me my phone so I call my people. Give me my to phone. To hey, a lawful test of your are you on your honest call? Are you on the call? Additionally, if are you are on the honest test, call? I have requested of you. So that means you didn't smell shit. That means she a liar. And you go along with that shit. You don't need to be wearing that badge. You for are a refusal to submit to oh, a lawful test of your breath, right urine, or blood. You, got two. you will be committing oh, a misdemeanor oh, in addition to any other penalties which can be imposed by law. I don't understand that. Refusal to submit. I don't to understand test that. I have requested is admissible. I don't understand that, Marina Wright. Do you, I don't understand none of that. Do you still no, refuse to submit to the test? I don't test? understand none of that. I don't understand none of what you're talking about. Because right now, how y'all just did, that's unconstitutional. I'm requesting that you no, take the test. I don't understand none of that. I don't understand none of that. Okay. This is going to be processed you, as a refusal. I don't understand refusal. none of that. You said three different charges. That's bullshit. Now record that. It's all on camera. Uh, that's right, because you're a liar. You're a liar. And you're, you're going along with your partner, she's a liar. We gotta do something. Because I don't even yeah. smoke weed. I don't smoke no drugs, I don't do no drugs, like none of that. I told you where I was coming from, I told you I was going, and she said she smoked weed. She's okay, I did not find any marijuana. You're a liar. You're what, a liar. Do you want to call your lady? You're a liar. I can't call nobody my hand. I can hand put call. it in for you. I can't call nobody my hand call. I can put it in for you. I can't call nobody my hand Okay, call. if you don't let me know the number, then I'm not going to call her and you I'm going lie. to call you know a that. tow truck. You don't even need to be on, wearing that badge. Did you you're a liar. Me? You say you smell Did marijuana. You hear me? You're a liar. Are you listening? And I'm going to prove that. I'm going to tow your and vehicle. And they're going to fire you. Okay. They're going to fire you because okay. you're a liar. I'm going to call a tow truck for your you're vehicle, a liar. okay? I hope you're recording this because you're a liar. You say you smell marijuana. Go ahead and put That's this stuff right. in the bag. Yeah, I'm gonna. That's right. You do what you gotta do. But you go, guess what? You're messing with the wrong person. You're messing if with the wrong person. Back of my car. Run a teletype and you mess yeah. with the wrong person. Get one more here. Seven five nine two eight one. Are you nearby? You gotta do nineteen sixty-eight. Go ahead and call him. I'm gonna go ahead and call call. Yeah. You move him. Give me the keys real quick. You want to be Seven, this and that, that, or you're a liar. You say you smell weed, you're a liar. I don't do no drugs. My enforcer tell you that. I so tell you where I was going. I was leaving a goddamn club and I was going to my property. Okay, I'm calling a tow truck for your vehicle, okay? It don't matter. Okay. And if anything happens, you're going to be part of that because you're a liar. Officers request a supervisor and a tow truck. Once the supervisor gets there, he is told that they found an open liquor bottle in Riley's car.
Hey, he's really combative and we need to move him to her car. If you don't mind just helping us. No. We just want somebody else no. here. We're getting him in the back of my car. Okay. Sergeant Smith with TPD. Uh, I appreciate that, Sarge. Okay, here, here's the deal, man. I got to I gotta take you from this car and we got to put you in that one, okay? Hey, it's like this. Are it's you, okay. Okay, are you, you going to cooperate? We're not going to have any issues, hey, right? Hey, hey, ain't nobody cooperating. Just like this. You'll be okay? Hey, I'm talking to you right now. Yes, sir. I ain't got no problem being okay. Okay. I got a problem with what happened earlier. Yes, sir. It's lies. Well, I'm going to tell you like this right now. I ain't got no problem. Okay. No okay. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. You ran my name. You know my record. It's all good, but it's like this right here. Uh -huh. I ain't did nothing. Okay. But I'm going to tell you right this. Yes, sir. And problem is the problem. Okay. Well, well you know good. you'll be afforded the opportunity. It's okay. When it's they, okay. Listen to me. You'll be afforded the opportunity. Got my phone, ma'am, still. You'll be afforded okay. the opportunity when you get in jail to, to provide a breath sample. You understand that, right? Yes, okay. You know you can provide a breath sample if all this is a big misunderstanding. I ain't worrying right? about no breath sample because gotcha. I went through three things. Okay. Since you got here. What you got? You ready? Uh, yeah. Okay. No problem. All right, come on, boss man. We're gonna get you in the car. We're gonna get you to jail. You can get on your way, okay? Okay. You got. Hey. Yes, sir. Can she give you my phone? Yeah, you need to call somebody? Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, you cooperate with us? We're going we're gonna to work with you, okay? No problem. Can you give, give him my phone? Please. Okay, we'll get it. This side. This, we're going to go to the passenger side, sir. Okay. Right side. Yes, sir. Okay, no problem. I appreciate that, man. Now, uh, who do you need to call? Um, can, can she give you my phone? Yeah. Okay. Have a seat, and um, I'll bring you the phone, and we'll make the phone okay. call here, okay? No problem. Appreciate it, man. Gotcha. I appreciate you for all going with your colleague. Make the right choice in life. You got it? It's kind of, you got to kind of I get it. I okay. It. Okay. It's, uh -huh. They didn't assist me, so I guess I work with you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very good. There you go. All right. Hang tight. I'll, we'll get your phone, and we'll get to that phone call. Once Riley has moved to Officer Muth's patrol car, Sergeant Smith offers him the opportunity to make a phone call. During this incident, every officer on the scene attempts to ask for Riley's iPhone security code. Riley wisely refuses every request, likely preventing further privacy concerns that could arise from surrendering his phone to the officers. I can dial the number if you just open it up for me. Can you see to open it up? Or do you want to tell me what it is and I'll open it real quick? Can you all um, put it right now? Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Officer Muth attempts to read Riley his rights, but he refuses to acknowledge the information from the arresting officer. Okay, ma'am, I'm through talking. Okay. I am through talking. I have to read this no, to you. No, you can't I'm read none of me. I don't want to say nothing. I don't want to say nothing to you. I don't want to say nothing to you because you're switching up three, three different scenario that y'all went through since y'all stopped me. I don't want to talk to you okay. by nothing. Because you nothing. Said yes. I want to talk to my lawyer. I don't want to talk to you by nothing. I don't you want you don't need to read nothing. Close the door, sir. You just have to listen. Close the door, sir. So I'm asking listen. you, please I'm close the door. The Are you recording this? Yes. Are you recording this? You well, I don't want to talk to you by nothing. I don't want to talk I don't want to talk to you by nothing. I don't want to talk to you nothing by nothing. I don't want to talk to you by nothing because you trying to sugarcoat it. No, there ain't no previous nothing. I am telling you this. I don't want to talk to you about nothing because what you said to me, miss, that you stopped me because your lights was out. And then she said she stopped me because she smelled weed. So therefore, y'all both are liars. I don't want to talk to man one of y'all. I don't care about none of that. You can say whatever you want to say. I don't understand none of what you're saying. I don't want to acknowledge none of what you're saying. And I am coherent to what you're saying. I have no knowledge to what you're saying. That's about what happened the first yeah. time. Did y'all um, search the car? Yeah. Okay, nothing in there? No. Well, okay, so you had a bunch of alcohol stash in there, but. Yeah, nothing open or anything? Yeah, open. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah, in his, like, Tervis in the center console, he had a mixed drink, and then under his knee, he had, um, a like little bottle of vodka tucked away. Oh, so he was... And he said he was coming from pockets and he had drinks at okay. pockets. So but anytime I try to ask him anything about it, he gets like this. What was he saying about the weed? He's uh 
mad because Oliver smelled weed when she first walked up to the car. And he said he doesn't smoke marijuana and he doesn't smoke hemp, so he's mad that we searched the car. Still alive. Do you have any evidence of that? Marijuana? Yeah. Did you get all of the signs that I got? From I, the stop and everything? I mean, you saw him. This is the car that yeah, yeah, yeah. flew by yeah. us. While we were on our stop with yeah. the blue lights on, yeah. Which is also an indicator. Um, are you still on? Mm -hmm. At a pretrial hearing, Riley's public defender questioned Officer Oliver about her actions. Oliver claimed she poured out the liquid because of Tallahassee Police Department Policy Number 42, which she said prohibited impounding liquids as evidence. However, a review of TPD policies found no such prohibition. Oliver has been deposed twice in this case. During her second deposition, the public defender presented her with a copy of TPD Policy Number 42. Unable to find any section supporting her claim, Oliver responded, I don't remember at least 16 times. I don't remember the conversation. It was over a year ago. It's a, t it's a policy of TPD to have body cameras on during criminal investigations, correct? Correct. This was a criminal investigation? Correct. But you didn't have it on for the entirety of the investigation, correct? I did. That's your testimony here today that you had it on for the entirety of the investigation. I believe I did. I only have one body camera. So you did not turn your body worn camera off at 2.37 a.m. on May 7, 2023? I may have. I don't know the exact time of when I turned it off. You don't remember discussing indicators impairment that you saw in Mr. Riley? I don't remember discussing that, no. But I could have. I don't know. Did Officer Muth or Sergeant Smith ever convey to you that their body-worn camera was on after you had turned yours off? I don't remember. Um, where's the protocol that told you to unseal a liquor bottle and dump it out? I'm unable to impound li uh, liquids into our police department property and evidence. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I believed I was going to be impounding it. So I dumped it out. Mm -hmm. And so what is the authority for impoundment? The rule, where do you get the protocol rules for impoundment? Our general orders, and I believe this was general order 42. So that would be the standard protocol? Yes. If I showed you a copy of general order 42, would you be able to recognize it? Yes. I made a copy for y'all as well. So is that a copy of General Order 42? Yes. Uh, can you please show me where in there it says that you cannot impound a sealed bottle of liquid? That would take me forever to look through. Do you want me to do that? Mm -hmm. So would reviewing that refresh recollection of where in the report or where in the rules it says you can do that? That I can dump it out or mm -hmm. that I can't impound liquid? Let's go first with the impoundment issue. Okay, so impounding liquid, correct. Mm -hmm. That would refresh. Specifically alcohol, I don't. No, so looking at this though would tell you where um, the protocol is that you can't impound liquids. Correct. Is that correct? Um, well, here it is. Um, read through it and then please let me know when uh, you found the part. Does this include the property and evidence packaging manual? Uh, can you be more specific about that? So the authority related references, it has the property and evidence packaging manual. Is that included in this? Uh, I believe so. That's procedure um, 17. Okay. Uh, I can give you the page number for section 17. Mm -hmm. One second. Page 32 is the property and evidence packaging manual and supplies that you were referencing. Mm -hmm. But it's not actually the manual. No, but there is a portion about impoundment protocols, correct? In other parts of this general order, there's multiple. About impounding, correct. Mm -hmm. And about also disposal of evidence. 
Um, correct. Possibly. I don't know because yeah. I haven't read the whole thing recently. Uh, had you read it recently at the point that this case happened? Uh, the protocol was directed out to me through use of another law enforcement officer. So they directed me to it in the general order, and I read it. On that day? On the On rest May 7th, day. On no. okay. So I see where this is not the actual copy of the manual, mm -hmm. but there is a copy of the manual to be seen. Um, page seven, section two, deals with just general protocols for impoundment. Um, page eight has packaging and transfer specifically regarding liquids. Could you review that passage? On page seven or? Uh, it begins on page seven, but really the point of interest is page eight, subsection A. Okay. Under packaging and transfer. Okay, so you specifically want me to look at those areas yes. instead of the entire 33 pages. Yes. So it says here, um, all seized, recovered, abandoned, found, suspicious, and evidentiary property shall be logged into and placed under the control of the P&E, which is property and evidence unit, prior to the end of a member's tour of duty, That's except... Objection here, sir. Okay. Uh, also, I was referring you to subsection E. I think it's the next page. The state would have re-raised. Oh, I'm just refreshing her recollection at this point. I understand. However, reading it, refreshing her recollection does not require to be read onto the record. Didn't um, ask her to. I'm sorry? I didn't ask her to. Okay. Well, I'm either way, objection to hearsay. Um, okay, so you asked where it says not to impound liquid. Mm -hmm. What items would be liquid? So in here it says what items. Did you want me to read that? Uh, no, I like I said, page 8, subsection E. Okay, you said page 7 through page 8. Well, it starts in page 7. Okay, uh, subsection E. Can we e. re-clarify what the question is? Because I think we're lost as far as what the question is at this point. I'm trying to figure out uh, where the protocol is to dump out sealed containers of liquid. Okay, I apologize. I thought the question was... Can I, where does it say I cannot impound liquid? And that would be on page seven. So you can't impound liquid, period. That's what you're saying. Correct. I cannot impound liquid. But liquids can be impounded. Not by a standard patrol officer. So if you find liquid, you're supposed to notify someone else to come in and pound it. Correct, in certain circumstances. If there's evidence. Correct. Because you're supposed to impound evidence. Correct. And this bottle was evidence, correct? Correct. So you should have notified somebody to come in and pound it. So in certain circumstances, the forensics team would come out, but in a misdemeanor, they do not come out for liquid or for their pro I don't know their exact protocols but I know they don't come out for so you just made the decision correct okay. you just made the decision to dump it out yes and that's because you can't impound it objection yes. asked and answered okay uh, in the car you also found a insulated mug right correct and that was in the cup holder Um, and it was in the cup holder at that point, correct? Yes. Uh, and you smelled alcohol in the cup? Correct. You thought it smelled very strong? Correct. But you didn't test the contents of the cup? No. You didn't take a taste of the cup? No. And you didn't dump out the contents of the cup? No. 
Riley's admission to drinking beer provided probable cause for the officers to request a breathalyzer test to determine his blood alcohol content. In accordance with Florida Statute 316.1932, under Florida law, refusal to provide a breath sample results in an automatic administrative suspension of the driver's license and can be used as evidence of guilt in court. In retrospect, remaining silent might have been a more prudent legal strategy for Riley, as his admission and subsequent refusal to comply compounded his legal troubles. After the verdict, Judge Jones sentenced Riley to six months probation, including 10 days in the Leon County Detention Facility, with credit for one day served. His vehicle was ordered impounded for 10 days, and his driver's license was suspended for six months. Riley, who chose not to testify, made a brief statement accepting responsibility for letting his emotions take over during his arrest. Initially cooperative, Riley became agitated and called officers liars after Officer Oliver claimed to smell marijuana, which he denied using. City Commissioner Jeremy Matlow, whose campaigns have been supported by Harold's political committees, he released a statement outlining his reservations about the legal procedure. Mr. Matlow said that the evidence presented at trial included all the hallmarks that drive distrust in law enforcement, phantom marijuana smells, fabricated evidence, and incomplete body cam footage. Thank you for watching Audit Oblivion. If you found this video informative, consider leaving a like. And if you are new here, subscribe for more police body cam footage.